I know I'm not the first person to say this, but David Yates is an absolute child molest, homosexual, child rapist, conservative Mormon Jewish son of a bitch who is the most uncreative guy who came from fucking TV directing to ruin Harry Potter. You got nothing on me. You got a TV show. He didn't just ruin Harry Potter. He was given like the ticket to ruin it as much as he fucking wanted to. I don't even know how that works. The first three directors were all great, and part of the idea I do understand with Harry Potter movies is that not only are the movies going to have differences from the books, obviously. Obviously! Of course it is what it is! <laughs> Mental, that one. I'm telling you. Are you mental? But they offer their own different kinds of experiences, and they get different directors doing it. The first two were a great sort of Christmas kids feel. The third one, they got Anya, Alejandro, and you read whatever the fuck his name is. Mr. Samir, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he's always doing really creative things, and he made things like the Mortar's map and the snow really good and everything. To be more specific on good and everything, I mean like he made things like the Mordor's map parchment paper thing be iconic to the point where it also had influence on the way the games were and things like that. And yeah, sort of fast pace to it. Then you get what's his name, the guy who sort of made more like party movies, but his sort of volatile party-esque movie style really worked for the God with a Fire because that was the first time they were handling one of the big books and they had different cultures coming in and everything, and that sort of different style worked. Besides the fact that Snape barely appears in the movie, it's great. It's something else I've been testing, which is fire. He also had the responsibility of sort of turning Harry Potter from the kid's story that it was to the darker points of it. My boy, my boy, my boy, my boy. Not to mention it's these first three directors that we owe most of the memorial full elements that stuck throughout the later movies to. Like Ray Fiennes being cast as Voldemort and the way he looks, the idea of him having no nose, for example, was not in the books. Or we owe Sirius Black, we owe Harry's sexy ways. Of course, there are actual rumors, by the way, that the main actors in Harry Potter are actually opposite gender, but we won't get into that. Although, for the record, I think it's true. Look at all the interesting ideas for costume design. And then David Yates, who came from fucking television, they decide, let's give you a movie. I don't know why in Fetch they gave him four movies and the Fantastic Beast movies. Gee, I wonder why nobody gives a shit about the Fantastic Beast movies. He decided, let's take this magical story and take the mature theme and use that as an excuse to make everything fucking colorless and gray and shit. And even when it gets serious, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like the scenes with Umbridge and the blood and the writing and everything were written much more graphically. Now I can understand to some degree that Harry Potter maybe wasn't supposed to be turning into some really graphic rated R movie. But there's a scene where Umbridge makes all of them write and have the pain on their hands and I legitimately could not even tell that that was what they were doing because you barely see any visual indicators of it. It's a quiet scene. Could I understand a word? <laughs> Sorry Rosie, I should have warned you, she's Filipino. I did think that in its own right, to be fair, making Umbridge a sort of thin little pink woman instead of the fat ugly woman that they made her in the books was sort of an interesting different contrast that I didn't have a problem with. But still. Another thing that's horrible about the Order of the Phoenix movie is the final fight where they're in the Department of Mysteries and everywhere is gray and he thinks let's make it dramatic because I'm a retard. Dude, he's got retard strength! He has retard strength! Get him off! In the book, there were dark parts and areas like that, but there was also a very interesting part of the book where they're in sort of some sort of like bright, brainy looking room and everything sort of got this almost clockwork orange-esque vibe to it that I think would have been really interesting in the movie. A similar problem is in Deathly Hallows Part 1, where they're in the Malfoy Manor, and everything's dark again. In the book, they describe the Malfoy Manor as looking very high class and everything, but also having a lot of purple and, again, not all dark colors. And the things with, like, Hermione being tortured were much more memorable. I think it would have been much more dramatic and disturbing if they showed some of that purple, because it wasn't just this manor saying, we're rich, evil, bad people. I suppose, if anything, David Yates did do a good job, in my opinion, on like the final fight of the whole series. However, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure any director would have made sure to emphasize a really good scene and writing on the final fight. Then the Fantastic Beast movies comes out and you don't even fucking get Hogwarts anymore. It's like they've given up trying, but they're so arrogant that we think we give a shit about Harry Potter lore just because it's Harry Potter lore. 
David Yates is a loser. He also ruined Hogwarts Legacy indirectly. Of course, that's partially the fault of Port Key Games, but if you compare Hogwarts Legacy stylistically to any of the much smaller Harry Potter games like Chamber of Secrets PC, <laughs> it is fucking boring no matter how much more content and better graphics are in it. Because again, it has that same colorless vibe. The Room of Requirement reeks of stupid, fantastic beasts in it. That reeks and I'm trying to eat. The Room of Requirement is fucking boring and you only go in it in the game because you have to. That's my only real motivation is not to be hassled. That and the fear of losing my job, but you know, Bob, that'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. To grow things and everything. I didn't give a shit about Thestrals, and I don't know why I wasn't able to ride on a Thestral, by the way. You know, Chris Columbus once said all the directors are to thank for the Harry Potter movies, but that's not true. Everybody is to thank except David Yates and his bald gay cock. He ruined it. He didn't contribute pretty much any of the interesting ideas besides maybe Bellatrix, I guess. And he sucks cock. He sucks cock. I can think of multiple other directors that could have been given one movie chance and a good job. Like, I would have thought they would have at least given them a chance with Order of the Phoenix, and then that would be that. Okay, you're terrible. Bye. I think maybe David O. Russell, or even Werner Herzog, or maybe Spielberg if they were able to get him. There are so many other directors that could have had their own takes on Harry Potter and made it hairier than ever. Go fuck yourself. You deserve rape. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Because I know, somewhere deep down in my heart, I still love you. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy, though, does definitely have that sort of boring, non-magical David Yates vibe. I think it's a good game in its own right, but it doesn't feel like a Harry Potter game. I thought Phil of Glimmer did a really good video essay on this. A lot of the musical choices even, you know, the, the, the coloring choices, how boring the Grand Staircase is, it reeks of David Yates's crap influence. Maybe it's not just Yates's fault. I don't know why they couldn't. I know Alan Parker turned them down. I said, no, I read the script once. Do you want me to do it? And they said, well, a lot of people want to do this film. I said, well, ask them then. And they, they, they put the phone down on me. <laughs> But besides that, what's the excuse why they keep working with this bald prick? I don't know why, but either way, he must be eliminated. Hopefully this new TV series will not have anything to do with him. I mean, I imagine it probably won't because it's meant to be completely new and everything. Imagine if he remade fucking Order of the Phoenix and kill myself. But anyways, that is the order of me. Goodbye. It is time to thrive as a human being.